Hello and welcome to the Car Care Nut channel. In today's video we're going to be focusing on the RAV4 Prime and some of the technical details of how things change from a conventional hybrid and from the Prius Prime, how it evolved into the RAV4 Prime. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos. And for my regular viewers, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's get right to it. Starting with the RAV4 Prime battery, now in the Prius Prime and in most regular hybrids, the battery is also always inside the cabin, whether it's underneath the seat, behind it, all the way in the back storage area like this Prius Prime. In the RAV4 Prime, because it's an SUV and it sits a little higher, they put the battery underneath the car externally. That is the first Toyota hybrid, plug-in hybrid that has a high voltage battery sitting outside the car. Now there are mixed feelings about this because it's a good thing because the battery sits so low on the ground and it actually makes the RAV4 Prime drive better because most of the heavy weight is in the, it's very close to the ground, makes the car more stable. But the not so heavy feelings is people are concerned about, well, it's outside, it's exposed to the elements. Well, the good thing about this battery is it's big, it's a big behemoth for lack of a better word, and it's extremely heavy and it is covered by a very big metal cover, kind of looks like a uh, TRD splash shield from a Forerunner that is ready to go over rocks. That's, that's the best way to describe the metal shield around the battery on the RAV4 Prime. Another thing about the battery is it is airtight. Of course, being outside, exposed to elements, water, rain, dirt, all kinds of stuff, it is airtight and actually the there is a great emphasis on in the repair side. So when you take this battery out, there's actually a tool, you gotta connect to it, pressurize it, and make sure it is 100% airtight, and there is no way for any air, let alone water or debris, to get inside of this battery. Now this battery, like I told you, is a giant behemoth, and it is very similar in construction and to the Prius Prime, however, it is double the capacity of the Prius Prime, hence the almost double the range. Now, another thing about this battery is it is heated and cooled, similar to the Prius Prime, but the cooling part is completely different. And we will cover more on the cooling part because it's cooled with the refrigerant in the second part of this video, which is dedicated to the world's most complicated HVAC system, which includes the cooling for the battery. Let's talk about some of the differences in the hybrid system itself. What differs from the Prius Prime or the regular good old hybrids? Now, in the Prius Prime, we talked about MG1 driving the car as well as MG2. Now in the RAV4 Prime, that doesn't happen. MG1 only starts the engine, charges the battery, and creates a reduction in the planetary. It doesn't exactly drive the car. But to compensate for that, to give the car more of a powerful feeling in EV mode, all RAV4 Primes are all-wheel drive. So they have that MGR motor in the back that actually assists significantly in EV mode and having the more powerful battery, it can deliver a very good driving up to, again, up to 84 miles an hour in EV mode only. Now, one thing I will note, and most people perhaps are aware of this or not aware of this, the RAV4 Prime does not have over 300 horsepower in EV mode only. It's not a Tesla. So I thought I'd say that. It only has that when you have the full power producing elements are on. So you got MG2 driving, MGR driving, and the engine is also on. That's when it delivers the most power, not in EV mode. Still have plenty of power in EV mode, but not full power. Now, some of the things that they had to do to give it more power and make it, because again, this is a heavier car, bigger car than your smallest Prius Prime, for example. It also has a big behemoth of a battery and it's all wheel drive and all this stuff they had to make some small changes in the inverter assembly. Now, inverter with converter assembly, I've talked about it in my series on how hybrids work. One thing they changed about the inverter, and I told you in the case of the Prius Prime, it's very similar to a regular hybrid, few tweaks in the software, but construction-wise, it's the same. But in the RAV4 Prime, the DC to DC converter, which in uh, layman's land is basically the alternator, 
This is what takes that high voltage, drops it down to 12 volts, charge the battery, power all electronics when the car is running. That has been moved from the inverter for the first time in all the Toyota hybrid land. All Toyota hybrids and plug-in hybrids have had the DC, com DC converter inside the inverter converter assembly. But now it has been taken out, moved over behind the seat. And it has, has its own fan and it has actually a filter. I have a video, I'll leave it right here, how to clean that filter. That is just to cool the DC to DC converter. Before it used to be coolant cooled when it was inside the inverter. Now it's air cooled, which is pretty sufficient for it. But the reason they took it out and not just because they want to make things different, because they wanted to add an additional boost converter. These boost converters, they take the voltage out of the battery, which is around 355 volts, and they can boost it up to 650 volts on demand as needed. So basically you get a lot more power, a lot more voltage. Instead of having a 650 volt battery, which would be a, little, a lot more dangerous, if you have a 355 volt battery and the, bo and the boost converters, they can jump it up to 650 volts. So now you have two instead of one boost converter inside the inverter. Another small thing that I want to note, the charger situation or the charging situation. Now, similar to the Prius Prime, the RAV4 Prime has an onboard charger, but the difference is there's two. The SE model has a 3.3 kilowatt charger. The XSE model has a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger. But let's clarify one thing, just like I did for the Prius Prime, if in case you didn't watch this whole series. You cannot DC charge these cars. It doesn't matter if you get a stage level two, level 275, level 2000, and you're the coolest guy in the block because you have this big behemoth expensive charger. It does not matter. You can either charge it at 120 volts or you can charge it at 240, 220 volts. That's it. There is no DC charging. This is not a Tesla. You can't get, a super, there's no supercharging and all this mess. This does not work. You are limited by the onboard charger of this car. It's 3.3 or 6.6. .6. You can make things charge faster by going 240 volts, but that's it. You cannot go further than that. Now this charger in the RAV4 Prime also sits underneath the back seat and also is air cooled. Nothing really special about it there. It's very similar to the previous Prime. But one thing I want to say about charging in general, the battery does have the capacity to precondition the battery before charging. So that's why it is heated and cooled. If the battery is too cold, it is not ideal to charge it. So it's gonna preheat the battery to a temperature that is appropriate for charging, then it'll charge the battery. If it's too hot, it's actually gonna cool it before charging. So I always tell you, set the charge schedule because then it will be a very efficient process because then the computer will precondition the battery before needing to charge it, not as soon as you plug it in, it won't start charging until it's preconditioned. And this mostly applies for the heating part. If you park your car outside in the cold winter and you want to charge it, it's gonna actually take longer because it's gonna need to first precondition the battery, then charge it so that if you set the charging schedule, it's gonna know that and it's gonna compensate for that by looking at the outside temperature, looking at your departure time. It's gonna say, okay, I need to heat the battery, I need to cool the battery. So everything is ready by your departure time. Another thing is the charge mode. Now the charge mode, all it does is you turn it on, it's gonna turn on the gasoline engine. It's gonna use that exclusively to charge the high voltage battery, but it can only achieve 80% of the possible charge when compared to plugging it in, in the wall. It can charge it to not 100% capacity of the battery, don't take that the wrong way, but the allowed full capacity. It won't be able to charge it to 100%, it'll only charge it to 80% than what you could charge it plugging into the wall. Other than these changes in the hybrid drive, and of course they're big changes, nothing is small, I'm not gonna make it smaller than it is. Everything else is somewhat similar to a regular RAV4 hybrid. Now the P810 transmission in the RAV4 Prime, it is also shared with the Sienna Hybrid, with the Highlander Hybrid, so it is not a one-off transmission that is completely different than everything else. Also the rear differential or MGR is also shared with the regular RAV4 Hybrid. There's nothing special about that either. Really the main differences is in the HVAC system and the battery of course and the onboard charger and everything associated with that 
and the inverter is different. Otherwise, very similar, same engine. However, there has been some tweaks to the timing of the engine to give it a little bit more torque. Not a lot, a little bit more, just to get to that magical number that they wanted to get with this car. I hope this video is helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new from it. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. And in the next video of this series, we're going to be talking about the RAV4 Prime's mega complicated HVAC system, which is possibly, in my opinion, the world's most complicated car's HVAC system. Until that next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have a wonderful day.